After spending many years exclusively using MacBooks, it was time for me to try something else. Now, I've made attempts in the past, excluding the Microsoft Surface Pro, which I posted a video on last time. But to be honest, things have never been where I hoped they would be. Until now. This is the latest Asus VivoBook S15 Plus Copilot, a decently priced 15.6 inch laptop that is finally a competitor to something like the 15 inch MacBook Air. Price wise, it costs exactly as much as the baseline 15 inch M3 MacBook Air, offering similar performance, yet arguably a much better package. For around 1300 bucks, you get 16 gigabytes of unified memory, which can be upgraded to 32 gigabytes and one terabyte of upgradable NVMe storage that can be accessed fairly easily by removing the bottom casing. The easily accessible NVMe storage is great, but it has one downside, and it is the fact that it throws down. As you can see from the numbers, it starts crazy fast, but then it slows down quite significantly. Compare that to this beast over here, which is the maxed out M3 MacBook Pro, which has double the speeds, it almost never throws down. You might see you know, a bit slower speeds from time to time, but overall it keeps a sustained performance. Well, here we have a downside and that's the throttling. Now, will that affect your day-to-day -day operations? Not really, but it's good to know if you try to do something more complex like video editing. However, the fact that you can upgrade this using just screwdrivers it's still amazing. Of course, when comparing it to something like the MacBook Air, you can't expect the same build quality. This Asus will not win any timeless design awards, but in a pool of plastic Windows-based offerings, the full metal built on the Asus remains purposeful and honest. What I mean by that is that it serves the purpose of being very comfortable and super thin and lightweight. Although this is a 15.6 inch laptop, grabbing it one handed feels as effortless as grabbing a 13 inch MacBook Air, for example. If you come from a larger laptop, you'll be aware of the, you know, weight anticipation that you used to once you grab something 15 inches or more by the side, having clinched your forearm for the weight. But here, none of that. Working on this machine and then grabbing it open to move it to another location feels like a breeze, which as you can guess transcends into the comfort of your everyday carry as well. The unboxing experience of the VivoBook was very pleasant having been presented with this suitcase style of box for the most part, which held the laptop in place, including the 90 watt charger, USB-C charger which I never unpacked from the box because I used my own for that purpose. But aside from the charger and the laptop, a pleasant surprise inside the box was this tote bag, which is actually a very nice EDC item, which has a separate compartment for the charger and other nicks and knacks made from this absolutely fantastic fabric. And of course, it is a perfect fit for the Vivo book so you can carry it like this or just adjust the straps to you know put it in your bag cool i like it if you have a decent lightweight bag to put it in your bag will thank you for having chosen this device it is conservative in its presence yet tastefully made with a delightful screen featuring thin side bezels by the way if you end up enjoying this video subscribe because why not now, to be honest, there are three things that I don't like, none of which I would consider real deal breakers, yet I feel obligated to share them with you. The first one is subjective, and to me that is the keyboard layout and the shift of everything to the left side to accommodate the numpad on the right. Perhaps if I deal with you know documents, Excel sheets and stuff like that, I might see that as a helpful layout, but the creative person in me prefers a standard central layout. While on the topic of the keyboard, the second thing that I don't like is the backlight of the keys. First of all, despite being able to control the colors and take advantage of <laughs> somewhat childish effects, the problem is the inability to read the keys. The silver coating in combination with the letter's transparency and the light that is emitted makes everything blend in into something you can, you know, sometimes have a hard time reading, no matter the color you choose. The third thing I showcased in my latest Surface Pro video, which I'll link at the end of this one, 
is the below average speaker system. Perhaps I wouldn't be that upset if the Harman Kardon branding wasn't shoved in my face. But let's just say that had I never heard of Harman Kardon and this is my first time experiencing them in this laptop, I'd say the issue probably shift their focus outside speakers. Aside from those gripes, I can only be thankful for having been presented with a super comfortable travel experience and a plethora of ports. In fact, being this thin, the VivoBook could easily win a prize for versatility, providing pretty much all the ports you could ever need, except for a regular SD slot, which is so unfortunate for me. So, on the right side, we have two USB A's, which are a rare breed at this point. USB A's 3.2. On the opposite side, we have two USB 4.0s, HDMI 2.1, which is fantastic. The questionable micro SD slot, which at this point I think is only great for action cameras and drones, and a headphone jack right on the you know perfect location. Great versatility when it comes to ports. I am equally impressed by the screen as well. The 15.6 inch 120 Hz OLED display offers 2880 by 1620 resolution, which is close to 3K for those calculating. And it looks absolutely stunning. The 89% screen to body ratio with these super thin side bezels is fantastic, but by far the most impressive thing are the colors. Looking at this laptop from every angle, it just looks spectacular and inspired me to put together this wallpaper pack, which is very funky yet so appropriate. When it comes to my wallpapers, the top three bestsellers the last few months are the Splash Wallpaper Pack, alongside Grayscale Tides, and of course, Paintbrush Madness, which is an all-time favorite. With that being said, I have a 20% discount on those packs, all of which come in super high 8K resolution, alongside curated smartphone cuts, fitting beautifully on any device. For the iPhone lovers out there, be sure to check out the latest and most advanced widget I've released so far called SmartWave, which is dynamic featuring all the goodies you might require. Calendar, events, weather, quick actions, animations, and more. I want to thank everyone who has supported the channel by purchasing my digital products, including all channel members who get to enjoy a free pack or widget every month, plus discounts and other perks. Your support matters. Thank you. Okay, so I'm not sure if you noticed this so far, but this is actually a 16 by 9 aspect ratio display, which I've never owned in the past. That translates to no black border experience when watching native 16 by 9 content, as well as more horizontal real estate, which is fantastic for side by side work. Now you can easily open this laptop one handed and the hinge of it is very, very sturdy. You can barely notice any wobbling, if any at all. In fact, the desk right now is is shaking more than anything else. Uh, but what's cool here is the fact that this thing lies completely flat, uh, which the only use case I can think of is positioning it on a stand like this if you want to use it at a more comfortable eye level with an external keyboard and mouse. Perhaps if there's a better use of that type of hinge, you can let me know in the comments below how you might utilize it. Come to think of it, having the laptop positioned this way, I have a much more natural, you know, angle and look when I participate in meetings. And by the way, this is a test using the front facing camera, which is 1080p. Now I'm not sure, you know, what the microphone sounds like, and you can actually let me know in the comments. Um, but looking at it right now and comparing it, especially to the Surface Pro 11, which I did a video on last time, I doubt, you know, it will be fantastic, but I think it does the job just fine. Uh, let me just uh, close that lid for a second. Bye bye. Not always bad here in the top notch department, however, because aside from the cute physical privacy shutter, there's also an IR camera that works with Windows Hello for instant access whenever you open the laptop. Booting up this laptop or powering it up from sleep is instantaneous and with the help of Windows Hello, 
Authenticating and getting into the OS is almost instant, which is an absolute pleasure. Of course, the biggest excitement, just like with my Surface Pro 11, is the internals and the Snapdragon X Elite processor, which is super impressive. No matter if I use the translated x86 apps via Prism or native ARM ones, most of the time I witness blazing fast performance with tremendous battery stamina. Unlike the Surface, this laptop's fans do kick in more often, not because it's necessary, but more so because that's how it was set at the factory. But rest assured, the sound that comes out of them the majority of the time is nothing worth noticing. What matters most here is the excellent and controlled temperatures while using it in the lab and the overall longevity, which is possible thanks to the overall internal performance and the much larger than the surface 71 hour battery. In my two weeks of using this device, I noticed hitting the 50% mark after six plus hours of mixed work, which means that if you're careful, you might actually get close or even surpass 15 hours on a single charge, which is fantastic. Mind you, this is unplugged and unhinged performance. Although you might lose five to 10% of the peak of what the machine can offer, you still utilize 90 plus percent of what the Snapdragon can deliver on battery alone, which is admirable. This portable laptop is no slouch when it comes to casual gaming as well. GTA 5, for example, runs at a full 3K resolution, chugging along at 40 to 60 frames per second, and things are even better on Overwatch, where in the medium settings, it performs above 70 or 80 FPS. Enjoying my favorite Age of Empires at ultra specs is a pleasure at around 50 to 60 FPS. But let's not get carried away and remember that this is a machine tailored for more, you know, productive people or productivity. If you're curious as to which games run on this ARM laptop, there is a very cool website called Windows on ARM Ready Software, which I'll link below the like button. This site is basically a source for compatibility information for games on Windows devices that run on the ARM architecture. As of now, I wish I could share more about the Copilot Plus experience, but unfortunately, as with other devices, some AI features are yet to be unpacked. That said, I can take advantage of features like quick access to the assistant, just like on the Surface, and the co-creator thing in Paint, which I see more as a gimmick than something you might utilize on a daily basis. Live captions are actually a great addition as you can position the app above or below the screen to generate and translate live. This is actually a fantastic implementation of AI as it makes worldwide content much more accessible. I love watching international content about cars and with live translate, I have a whole new world that I can enjoy live. For example, I have a video in German and all I have to do is power up live captions and play the content and enjoy the translation live. Dann der DS hier mal 20 Zoll in vorne. Ja, noch die Optionen Keramikbremsen und Now furthermore, you can turn on the microphone on live translate and use the live captions in that way, which is also a great way to communicate with somebody else. So, I can go to preferences and include microphone audio. And now the mics of the laptop will be picking up whatever I'm saying. So if I decide to speak in a different language, things will look something like this. Здравейте и добре дошли в моят канал. В момента говоря български и се надявам, че вие може да ме разберете. Outside Copilot Plus, the Asus app that comes pre-installed provides additional handy tools such as the ability to change the keyboard's backlight, display settings, audio presets, additional battery optimization tools, and system diagnosis, which can literally blow away any dust out of the fans. To do this cleanse, all I have to do is power up the My Asus app and just run a one-click diagnosis and check out what happens. A few moments later. Now, I know for a fact that some of you were concerned about, you know, glitches during my coverage of the Surface Pro 11. However, two weeks into using the VivoBook S15, I have barely any complaints to share. Aside from some games triggering warnings of missing dedicated memory, which is totally normal for a device that shares the RAM with the CPU, and apps like Notion acting like a grumpy grandpa, 
there isn't much to report on. Perhaps the most considerable discomfort I experienced was with iCloud Drive, triggering constant Windows malware warnings to the point where I was forced to uninstall it. A question I get asked a lot is where does this laptop stack up? Is it comparable to the M3 MacBook Air, the 15 inch I mentioned, or is it more like a MacBook Pro competitor? I'd say it lives somewhere in the middle. If we look at the benchmarks alone, we see that it performs close to an M3 Pro machine, which on paper is better than the Air. In reality, however, I'd say it's a battle of software optimization. One thing is sure, however, this is a fantastic and reliable package that doesn't overheat and stays cool on your lap, balancing performance, portability, and reliability perfectly. If you enjoyed this video, then you should definitely check out my latest Surface Pro episode as that device features the X Elite chip and a very similar specs, but in a two-in-one form factor. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out. Boom!